driving Hope comes and stops us in our tracks Bravely we prove in our striving Trudging together each day You know what make it easier is if if I could hit share groups and then select the groups that I would like it to go to. That would make it it'd be make it so much easier. I'm having to go through all of this because there's some changes coming, man. And uh, you know, I'm I'm sharing this to all the groups, well the ones that'll allow it anyway. Like I can't put it in Alcoholics Anonymous. Because there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, promotion in there, so not quite fit for that one. My podcasts are a good fit for that one, though. So you, you can't just willy nilly kind of throw everything. That's one thing I don't like is just throwing things against the wall, hoping it sticks. Um, I don't think we have anybody here yet. That's okay. I I got rewatchers. I got rewatchers. Calm down, Sawyer. You don't need to growl at everybody. All right. Um, I'm going to be, I'm working on something. I'm not used to working with this yet. But I'm looking at adding a Discord group. At least that's what was suggested by, uh, you know, um, by Mark. Now, and I should probably qualify. Um, you know, we're being um, promoted in a in a sense, but it doesn't really have to do with money. It has to do with time, and. Uh, like my this is my this is my uh page holder because <laughs> it's not today Ooh, don't lose it don't lose it i'll lose my sanity there <laughs> All right. um so um you'll probably be seeing some differences here um i'm gonna be working on my sound quality may make the room look a little different but uh it's a little too tinny i need it i need it dulled or what happens is i just sound like i'm in a huge room um right now i'm just using the microphone from this camera here see. <laughs> you can't i can't show you the camera <laughs> it won't work even if I show it to you on the screen, it can't see itself. Well, three, four, I'm not even gonna, yeah, I'm not even gonna think about that. That's the weird stuff that pops up in my head and, and distracts me. Um, yeah, I'm halfway through. I'm halfway through my uh, my shutdown. Um. So my, and I'll, I'll put this on my page too. The Dion Miller, uh, I, I have a different page. I'm just waiting for it to hit 30 days so I can do certain things. But I'm probably shutting down that Facebook, my personal one. And I'm switching it. So. Welcome to the Daily Trudge. My name is Dion. We're going to be in the big book. We're on page 27. Um, if you're here, please say hello, whether you're watching the live or the rewatch. I'll show you guys what I did. To, well, you can't really see it. So, what I, you know, I, uh, I, I got to make sure that my internet's okay. So, you know, I used to be in telephony, so I ran a Cat5 cord uh, straight to my laptop right from right from that and now yeah what i say page 27 all right
memory. I feel like I'm in the wrong place because this doesn't quite fit. It's probably going to be like 12 by 12. Yeah, that's why. 12 by 12, page 27. <laughs> I knew something wasn't right because it just wasn't fit in step two. And that's what this is. So, All right, step two, page 25. All right. We might as well just start. Um, we might as well just start at the beginning of the chapter, um, because I'm going to end up reading two, three pages anyway. So, um, so, uh, you know, you'll hear a saying, "I came to," or "I came," which means that I showed up to AA. I came to, which usually means I got a good night's sleep. Then I came to believe, right? Came to can be an epiphany, maybe even a spiritual experience. But, uh, you know, you'll hear you'll hear that saying a lot in AA. I came, I came to, I came to believe. And that's how I kind of work that one. Um, you know, coming to is kind of something that uh, an alcoholic experiences every day that they've been drinking i didn't go to sleep and wake up um hey daryl so I didn't, I didn't i didn't i didn't go to sleep and wake up i passed out and i came to <laughs> uh, i was just utilizing one of your favorite lines as as lately anyway the i came i came to i came to believe uh, I was just talking about that, but uh, reading out 12 by 12. Second step. And uh, yeah, so um, it said 27, but I'm just going to start at the beginning of the chapter. We already got some people here and we are ready to go. Um, I had some, I had some announcements I did earlier. Uh, number one, we're creating a group for people, for a place for people to go. <laughs> A lot of us are tired of Facebook. Um, so, <laughs> That's yeah. very topical for Daryl at the moment. Yeah. Well, you're one of the you're one of the reasons I made the decision. You know, I'm just uh, um, and I'm not and I don't want to put down Facebook, but uh, you know, they're just not conducive to recovery. Uh, they're associated with uh, one guy who likes to take all of the. You know what he did last year for 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 recovery month was uh he took a lot of our abatement money he had an invite only party in washington dc with a superstar now now you the the tickets were free but you had to sign up for them and then they they did a lottery on who could go and it was just surprising that you know all the popular people went um, and those are the people that that Facebook uh, supports in recovery. Uh, the beautiful people, the beautiful people. <laughs> wow. It's funny because and it it only goes to me because I put out the screaming Jay Hawkins version of I put a spell on you, but Marilyn Manson <laughs> redid both those songs, so Marilyn Manson came to my mind. Um, I love the original version of I put a spell on you. Cause he's nuts and he's just crazy. I love his expressions. The video is just scary. It's okay. All right. <laughs> oh, uh, they're going to start calling me Mr. Off topic. The moment they read step two, most AA newcomers are confronted with a dilemma. Sometimes a serious one. How often have we heard them cry out? Look what you have done to us. <laughs> I got a chuckle. You have convinced us that we are alcoholic and that our lives are unmanageable. Having reduced us to a state of helplessness, you now declare that none but a higher power can remove our remove our obsession. Some of us won't believe in God. Others can't. And others still who do believe that God exists have no faith whatever. He, he will perform this miracle. Yes, you've got us over the barrel, all right. But where do we go from here? 
Um, I was the one that I believed in God, but I didn't have any faith. You know, I've always believed in, in a higher power. Um, I grew up Mormon. I don't remember much of it um, because I wasn't listening. Um, I just did not agree with what they were telling me. I did not, when I thought of God, I did not get the feeling of damnation and, 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 uh, con bad consequences. You know, when I thought of God, I felt love and it was the only thing in the world that I felt love from, but I didn't put much faith in it. You know, um, faith, I, faith, is, for you? faith is trust and I didn't even trust myself. Uh, my uh, my higher power's love language is trust. Yes, it's all about trust. And the more the more I trust my higher power, he, she, or it, the better my life becomes. You know, um, lack. That's of where I. That's where I said I had a God of my misunderstanding. Yeah. First Testament God. Yeah. Wrath and damnation. And you know. I don't know. And I think it might be even harder for someone. I think we all have our sticking points in the program somewhere, but uh, I think it'd be really hard to be somebody that was raised with a lot of faith, believed in it and was kind of wrong because he got a backtrack and, and stuff. I told, you, but, I, I told you yesterday that my concept of my higher power today is what I call my Santa Claus God. Yeah. The fluffy bearded guy, all what have you. My sponsor threw a twist at me years ago. Um, he goes, so do you have a conceptual vision of your higher power? And I said, yeah, I do. Santa Claus kind of guy. He goes, hmm. Do you have a visual conception of your evil? And that tossed me. <laughs> I went because literally when I got here, I, I firmly was believing that I was the incarnate of evil. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had a history of it, um, of doing nothing redeeming type yeah. shit. Yeah. And, and so when I got sober and, and what have you, and, and started, actually started in step two to re reform that vision, um, I fled from the thought of evil. Mm -hmm. It's like I didn't, I would, I, I would fear, total fear. I was like, yeah. I did not want anything to do with it. Well, he made me like look at it. Yeah. And I don't, are you familiar with um, Star Trek? The Star Trek series is. Oh, I'm, I'm very familiar with my okay, Star Trek. Okay, so second generation. Um, the uh, uh, what was your name? Security Chief Yar. Yeah, yeah. Remember the one where. They visited this planet and they had cast away all their evil and put it on a rocket and sent it to another planet and became yeah. a tar pit. That's my concept of evil. Hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. So, and so I did that and I said, now what? He goes, well, you, you need to embrace it just like yeah. your higher power. Yeah. And I went, Fuck you. <laughs> he goes, no, he, he says, it's a part of your character. I, I get it. It's no I, longer your dominant, thank correct. God. Yeah. But it, it is a piece of your makeup. Absolutely. Yeah. And that and that freaked me out. That took me a while to get through that process. Uh it reminds me of uh because I listen to a lot of Jordan Peterson. I, I like Kasha Yar, that's it. Uh I knew what you meant, yeah. And then she came back and uh, Whatever, but it just kept her on that episode. <laughs> and then she had a warped up. baby, and who knows? But anyway, <laughs> but it reminds me of Jordan Peterson of, of saying that 
we need to know how dangerous we are and then we need to pull it back and it's the same kind of concept i need to know the evil in me too so i don't do it today it's it's like it, i i mean i'm i'm way okay with it anymore because i don't act that sure. way but if 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 the situation deems necessary it's a tool mm -hmm. it's like well how are we going to get down to causes and conditions if we don't right but i mean it's like depending on the scenario i guarantee you somebody comes walking into this house unannounced with harm in their in their intent yeah the the tar baby's coming out yeah oh yeah oh, absolutely you know um the thing is we understand that though you know exactly. like i know i know how fucking dangerous i am and i pull it back it's called respect it's called kindness it's called being good um it's having a conscience yeah morals a good set of morals, morals values yeah, all of those that things that, that i've developed over 34 years yeah and continue to hopefully yeah i was gonna say and we're still learning yeah uh let's look at at the let's look first at the case of someone who says he won't believe the belligerent one he, he is in a state of mind which can be described only as savage his whole philosophy in life in in which he is so glorified is threatened it's bad enough to admit uh it, it's bad enough he thinks to admit alcohol has him down for keeps but now still smarting from that admission he is faced with something really impossible how how does he cherish the thought that man risen so majestically from a single cell in the primordial ooze is the spearhead of evolution and therefore the only god that his universe know must he renounce all of this to save himself at this juncture his aa sponsor usually laughs this the newcomer thinks this is just about the last straw this is the beginning of the end and so it is um the beginning of the end of his old life and the beginning of his emergence into a new one his sponsor probably says take it easy the hoop you have to jump through is a lot wider than you think at least what i found it so so did a friend of mine who was a one-time vice president of the american atheist society but he got room but he got through with room to spare well says the no newcomer i know what i know you're telling me is the truth it's no doubt the fact that a is full of people who once believed as i do but just how in these circumstances does a fellow take it easy? That's what I want to know. You know, uh, my sponsor told me when I first got sober, he said, Dion, your only job, aside from, you know, my, aside from my uh, living amends, cleaning and things like that, my only job was to breathe in and out, go to meetings, and stay sober. That was my job. And he kept it very simple for me. He said, Dion, I want you to take it easy. I want, you know, because I wasn't used to it. And what was I learning? Well, I was learning delayed gratification is what he was teaching me. I know that now. Um, but that's part of taking it easy. Um, you know, finding other things to do. Um, what, what are some things that you did to kind of take it easy in the beginning? Because we're trying to free our minds. For the, we, first, uh, for the first 18 months or so, you know, they told us go to, you know, 90 and 90 type of deals. Sure. Um, I, I lived in the rooms. Um, I would do two, three meetings a day type of thing. And I worked. Yeah. And, and what have you. But uh, for the first year, I, I when I got my kids, uh, got custody of my kids. Think about that yeah the ju judge chose me over and that was just newly sober yeah it chose me over my ex <laughs> so but anyway uh, i i digress um i lived in the meetings and did whatever i could service work i chaired wash house meetings and and did those things 
um, just trying to coffee. Trying to trying to you had to earn coffee. Yeah. To, to be yeah. able to serve it at putt, yeah. you had that to earn is, that. Yeah, it's a right to stand up in the middle of the meeting and, and go pour coffee. You're absolutely correct. Well, just even behind the coffee bar, attending that. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, you needed was something you, you had you had you had to earn it. You had mm -hmm. to show that you were going to commit yeah. type of deal. Well, it's just one of the things they did. Yeah. But for me, I mean, I needed to shake my anger. Mm -hmm. Um, and delving into this program and talking with others and and what have you, um, chairing those meetings. Um, and getting out of self, I had to learn how to do that. I had to, I had to cast the tar baby away. Yeah. Um, and, and so I was as high strung as you could be. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't laid back whatsoever. <laughs> you know, I, it's like I always thought, oh, I'm going to miss something kind of attitude. You know, I got to yep. be doing this and got to be doing that. Yep. And that's changed. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm way chill in comparison. Yeah. yeah we're, you know, I don't rush anywhere because so far God hasn't let me miss anything. I haven't missed out on anything, you know, so I don't need to rush anymore. Because I know that well, God I don't, would, uh, put me in the place that I need to be anyway. You know, I, it was like, I, I, as I looked into, became two part, uh, step two, mm -hmm. um, I started to get that feeling of, I'm not in it alone. I'm not having to compete. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up as an only child um, and left to my own devices, latchkey kid, blah, blah, blah type thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I had to, I had to relearn how to live. Yeah. And, and all, all of those things, the stuff that I did in the past. So, you know, learning how to not continually look over my shoulder mm -hmm. at what what might be coming yeah yeah waiting for yeah. the shoe to drop has gone away right yeah i tell i tell people you know it's like it, it, what a relief it was it wasn't at that very second when the red and blues came up behind my car <laughs> and I looked at my speedometer instead of in the ashtray or yeah, under, my, that, that, under, my, under my seat type yeah. of things. So yeah. I, I was going to bring that up also that, you know, now I drive around, I see a police officer and it doesn't bother me because uh, I'm not doing anything wrong. Dude, I, some of my best friends are freaking cops now. Yeah. I, yeah, I lived. I, I lived with one in Elizabeth. I rented. I rented a room from him. <laughs> DPD officer. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know most police officers I've met, they're pretty good people. Um, well, most, you know they're they've got servants' hearts and they're not in it for the money. I can tell you that. You know, it, it, it's kind of like we've talked about it being a biker and 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 being spiritual but still having that biker attitude yeah. it didn't work it didn't work for me yeah um i i have issues with a couple of groups that are out there mm. sober sober clubs yeah um for me it was like i and and i'm in various biker groups mm -hmm. and you see the the hate yeah you see the you know they're all corrupt they're this they're pigs they're you know what have you and it's like you know cops are just people like you and me until you give them a reason to be a cop <laughs> i've met a lot of cops who are also bikers you know so. oh well yeah absolutely yeah. you know i mean I, that's why I, that's why i rode with who i rode with yeah it's a law enforcement group yeah but you the only reason I didn't like the police was because I was doing something stupid and I didn't want to get caught. That is right. the only reason. 
I can come up with. You know, I was doing my job. They had their job and I didn't like it when their job caught my job. That's right. You know, I, I got to do an amends to a couple of officers that used to come to our house when I was still drinking. I was in 7-Eleven and my wife, Shannon, she, she's like, hey, do you remember them? I'm like, no, I was drunk. <laughs> she's like, these are those are the police officers that used to come to our house that never took you to jail and always helped us. And they did. They helped me get sober. So I got to go over. It wasn't really an amends because they didn't want to hear an apology about wasting their time because they didn't consider it that. But what I told them was what you did worked. And thank you for doing that. Thank you for supporting me and what you did worked. So th and I got to reinforce a right thing. Um, and, you know, that's always neat to be able to be in those situations. No. You know, it's like I was in Vitality one night um, at one of their late night meetings, and there was a guy across the room, this old boy, he was gray haired and heavy set type of deal. But anyway, you know, I shared and I said, my name is Daryl and I'm an alcoholic, blah, blah, blah. Did my share. <clears throat> and, uh, after the meeting, he came up to me and he goes, your last name is Kilmer, isn't it? <laughs> and I went, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was a cop, retired. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, it was like, <laughs> yeah, it, it was like, thank, thank God, it was like, there aren't any more people wearing badges with guns that know my name anymore. Yeah, and that's a good thing. Yeah, those are good things. All right, so so the, the, the newcomer is asking how they take it easy. We put in our two cents here. That agrees the sponsor is a very good question indeed. I think can tell you exactly how to relax. You won't have to work at it very hard either. Listen, if you will, to these three statements. First, Alcoholics Anonymous does not demand you believe in anything. All of its 12 steps are but suggestions. Second, to get sober and stay sober, you don't have to swallow all 12, all of step two right now. Looking back, I, I find that I took a piecemeal myself. Three, or third, all you really need is a, is is a truly open mind just resign from the debating society and quit bothering yourself with deep questions as whether it was the hen or the egg that came first again all i say is you need an open mind the sponsor continues take for example my own case i had scientific schooling naturally i respected venerated even worship science as a matter of fact i still do all except the worship part Time after time, my instructors held up to the basic principle of all scientific progress. Search and research again and again, always with an open mind. When I first looked at AA, my reaction was just like yours. This AA business, I thought, is totally unscientific. I can't, this I can't swallow. I simply won't consider such nonsense. Then I woke up. I had to admit that AA showed results, prodigious results. I saw that my attitude regarding these things had been anything but scientific. It wasn't AA that had a closed mind, it was me. The minute I stopped arguing, I could begin to see and feel right there. Step two, gently and very gradually began to infiltrate my life. I can't say upon what occasion or upon what day I came to believe in a power greater than myself but I certainly have that belief now. To acquire it, I only had to stop fighting and practice the rest of AA's program as enthusiastically as I could. I think that's a great explanation. You know, resign from the debating committee. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Think of, think of what Dr. Bob had to go through to in his brain. I mean, he went, how long was it before his obsession was removed like two and a half years two and a half years something like that yeah i think i i think i'm close on that 
I uh, think I, mean, I think Bill said his never really went away totally. Yeah. Well, Bill's last his deathbed request was for a shot. No. No. Nobody. I mean, it, it, we're, we call that death rattle. And you're speaking nonsense. His brain just wanted the easier, softer way. <laughs> and he didn't get it the shot. He died sober. But, um, you know, that just tells you. What does that tell you? It says the brain just wants the easier, softer way. You know, and sanity may have returned, but that doesn't mean my brain is reliable. Um, not as an alcoholic. With an engineering background, I, I was pretty anal and, and fact orientated type of deal it's like i wanted to know how things worked and again i always refer to my sponsor because my sponsor was so critical in my education yeah he goes you know daryl why don't you just fucking assume that you're an alcoholic for a while quit fighting it yeah. just assume and and all he was doing was Get open-minded. You're getting yeah. open-minded about God. Mm -hmm. Do the same thing with your disease. Yeah. It's like, here's a history of how this has worked. Just by talking and working with others, cleaning up the wreckage type shit, and then helping others. Mm -hmm. And people stop drinking. Yeah. They start being productive. They start being happy. Yeah. So why don't you just go ahead and assume yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, you know, um, well, that's what, you know, and that's a great place to start, too, because that's what we're really trying to do is just remain open minded. And uh, man, I had a thought, but it left. So that's OK. Um, this, is only, <laughs> this is only one man's opinion based on his own experience, of course. I must quickly assure you that AA straight in numeral paths. In their quest for faith if you don't care for the one i suggested uh you'll be sure to discover one that suits you if you only look and listen many a man like you has begun to solve this problem by the method of substitution you can if you wish make a itself your higher power that's actually what i was going to bring up um you know in the beginning for me what what helped me a lot was going to meetings and hearing other people be vulnerable with strength. That was something I really wanted. I wanted to be vulnerable with other people, but be able to have those good boundaries. And no, I couldn't trust myself, but I saw other people doing it and I could trust the process. And that's what got me. I saw other people doing it that were worse than me that were getting good results. And I wanted that. That really attracted me. So um, here's a very, uh, very large group of people who have solved their, their alcohol problem. Group of drunks spells out God. In this respect, they are certainly a power greater than you who have not even come close to a solution. Surely you can have faith in them. Even this minimum of faith will be enough. You will find many members who have crossed the threshold just this way. All of them will tell you that once across, their faith broadened and deep and relieved of the alcohol obsession, their lives got kind of unaccountably transformed. They came to believe in a higher power, and most of them began to talk of God. Um, yesterday, my daughter reached out and asked if she could borrow some money, right? Now, she had to ask, right? She had to humble herself. She had to accept the fact that she had no money. Then she had to humble herself and then ask for help. Now, what if I would have made hard terms about that? She wouldn't ask me again, right? And that's kind of how I tend to think about my relationship with my higher power is how I treat my own children. You know, I said, what's your cash app? <laughs> I did not make hard terms absolutely you know um so i did not make too hard of terms i lost the place there because there's a reading to this ah found it i got lucky came to believe 
I gave lip service to my belief when I felt like it or when I thought it would look good. I didn't really trust God. I didn't believe. Um, um, I didn't believe he cared for me. I kept trying to change things I couldn't change. Yeah, right. People, places, and things. Um, gradually in disgust, I began turning it all over, saying, "You're so omnipotent. You take care of this." <laughs> I don't know. I think even in anger, <laughs> even in plum disgust. Um, God's going to be there for us. You know, um, I have to remember that my best thoughts got me here. And that I did that to myself. So when I think I can start making decisions again, I really should use the route that I've been using already. I really should. So... You take care of it. He did. <laughs> I began to receive answers to my deepest problems, sometimes in the most unusual ways. Unusual times, driving to work, eating lunch, or when I was sound asleep. You know, I find that actually a lot of my stuff comes to me in dreams because my subconscious is trying to work things out so oh, uh, it sounded like you were smoking a bong so i muted you <laughs> oh i wasn't smoking a bong my wife was opening up a uh amazon <laughs> ah that package what'd you get as long as it's not personal i open up packages here all the time so <laughs> all right. it's open meeting um, I realized that I hadn't thought of those solutions. A power greater than myself had given them to me, and I came to believe. Yeah, so sometimes even in anger, as long as we're being honest, we're being forward, you know, I think God tends to answer us if it's something that we're really going for. So, all right. Hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. Were you here the whole time? Nope, that went up to number two. Well, we've been going 38 minutes, but Amber's here. So, we'll pull out her favorite. Why not? I I don't really have anything going on until the 6 o'clock meeting. So. I do have stuff going on. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> I'll just be honest about it. Yep, Daryl is live. Daryl K. Live. Okay, Amber. September 10th, my denial was so thick when I came to Alan that I didn't even know there were alcoholics in my life. Oh. Alanon helped me feel safe enough to look at the truth. As my denial began to lift, I was horrified at the lies I told myself and others. I was in a noon meeting and a man called me out for everything. Purple hair, nose ring. So I put my number in chat offering to sponsor men and women. Be warned, purple hair, nose ring, tats. <laughs> oh, fuck him. <laughs> now I know I didn't go to the noon meeting. <laughs> Are you serious, Amber? Somebody that did that? Uh, you know, yeah. Purple hair, yeah. I like your purple hair. I think it fits. You know, that's my wife's favorite color. She had purple my hair for the wedding. Look at my go on to my go on to my uh, page and then look at the wedding pictures. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, well, we are talking about denial. <laughs> so, fuck him. All right. But I went from one extreme to the other and became a compulsive truth teller. Truth teller. In AA, we call that brutal honesty. Um, I remember uh, my first marriage. Um, her, My father-in-law at the time, real timid guy. 
right? Real timid guy. <laughs> Your screen right now. Um, real, yeah, real, real timid guy, right? And but one day he said to me, he said, Dion, you are brutally honest. And he kind of explained it to me. And he said, you're being honest, but you're being judgmental at the same time. And and that caught. And I'm like, oh, so I just went from being dishonest to the other extreme when I need to be in balance. Right now, truth telling doesn't include like name calling and and things like that. You know, like somebody, you know, and I think that's funny because then you go on camera and you have green hair. <laughs> they probably won't be back. Right. Um, and that's usually somebody, you know, something's going on. You know, it, it's so. I had a person one time I, I used to do. You remember Ed, Big Ed? always pe preaching about his his sponsor was uh you mentioned his name uh one time oh boy always had money in his in his pocket in his front pocket no not dutch anyway doesn't matter but he always preached about the importance of going on 12 steps if somebody asks you to go you go period yeah. the end you know yeah. and and I did a lot of those way more than I do now, but um, I remember a friend um, needed some help and we were going to go 12 step his ass and actually take him to a rap house, whether he's willing or not. Yep. And I asked this person as well, I said, you want to go on this 12 step call? And the first thing he said, was does he smoke? <laughs> I, I'm like, oh no. So you have conditions? <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. See, you fucking go. gutter ass drunk? Yeah. I don't know. Did he piss his pants? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, these people that put their conditions on their sobriety, it's just. Well, and, and hear it again, too. I mean, because Amber's saying, you know, he had his sober date with his name. And it just seems like, and Daryl, that's one reason why I asked you to be my sponsor, because you don't do this shit. You don't come up when you know, the other day was your birthday, but you don't say, you know, my birthday is coming up. But it just, sometimes these people have to announce how much time they have every single fucking time. You know, I will sometimes, time. but... It, it, it's not a qualification exactly it's it's like well it is to some extent because yeah somebody will say something that makes me you know like when a dog hears a weird noise they go uh, <laughs> type of thing makes <laughs> me do that um and it's like you know i've got i've got a day or two in this fucking program and this is my experience yeah and so it's like your experience might be totally different, but don't tell me how it is. That that's it. I think we're done with this part. Um, I agree, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I started this and why I always invite people on because now my experience isn't wrong, but it might not be a fit for somebody. And I would rather I would rather they get what they needed than me feeding my ego that was that was my dad pretty much amber he died sober but he, he i took him to his very first meeting on new year's day actually one year and he 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 didn't care for it <laughs> <laughs> welcome mh I'm trying to put in my head who you might be but if you're wanting to stay mh we do anonymity here. I don't know what you wrote. Oh, no, I already know who it is. Okay, I figured it out because of the way you wrote it, too. Um, but, um, yeah, you didn't really miss much. But uh, I think having different experiences. I mean, look at the big book. Look at all the stories in the back. Every story is a different experience. 
every story every yeah. yes that, i mean that that book is and those stories have changed throughout the editions they, they've changed and like in my book um acceptance is on uh 317 or something like that. I don't, no that's fourth edition third, third edition, edition. 420. no okay it's not 420 it's three something anyway it doesn't matter i am 34 years into this program here let me do that i have not memorized the big book oh hell no and there's a reason for that it's because if somebody asks me a question it forces me to go look it up and get into it mm -hmm. type of deal but yeah the book is just covered in the first 164 is the first 164. The rest of it is characterizations and 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 testimonies. Yeah. And your testimony is different than my testimony. Our common thread is the disease itself. Yeah. You know, it, it's like I wash the dishes this way, you wash the dishes that way. We we both eat off the plate. Yeah. Uh, that's a good way to describe it. Uh, MH, we're just right now. We're just talking. So, um, but feel free to. Feel it was it was second step. Yeah, we were talking <laughs> second step. Then we were talking denial. Now we're talking different experiences and 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 things like that. So, uh, but we're talking about we're talking about different experiences because we did get that concept of the second step and then we did do the third step and you know we're working this program mm -hmm. it's it's like the other thing that makes me kind of chuckle inside is when when people go my program well motherfucker you don't own it that's right <laughs> it's the program your yeah. experience yeah. within the program and and i think once we at least when newer people understand that that helps even more with an open mind but if my way or the highway days are over we don't work that way anymore yeah i can't my, about my, my way or the highway led me to the front door yeah yeah uh yeah a lot of spirituality here um we're recovering alcoholics and so i come on and i do a lot of talk on 12 steps and things like that but anyone is welcome anyone anyone is welcome if you have a different experience and we don't say normies here we say non-alcoholics so oh man why emily? <laughs> emily says more than one way to complete a project i don't care if yeah. you're drinking a beer right now mh that, that doesn't bother us with or without instructions yeah, <laughs> but it's usually best to follow the instructions because you know, I throw people off because um, it says in chapter five, rarely have we seen a person fail who's thoroughly followed our path, but your path is going to be different, but the work's the same. Right? So we all do the work. But we're going to get a different result because we're different people. Your Hi, Emily. Yeah. No, I don't care about background noise. I don't charge for this. So, all right. Um, dang, Emily, that is fantastic. That is really cool. And I'm, I'm kind of. Wait a minute. I know another Baranic. I know another Baranic. Just Emily, are you Emily? Okay, sorry. Um, I know another Baranic is all I'm saying. I, I won't be. Do you know Stephanie, Emily? Uh, I'll just bring that up. She's not. She's not in the program, so I can't pull in. Um, M H. Do you feel like you got a drinking problem? No. Yeah. I mean, it is one o'clock in the afternoon, and you're drinking heavy. That's kind of, it's kind of a sign. <laughs> Are you drinking alone? I am, I am powerless over trolling, and my trolling has become unmanageable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
That's fair, dude. That's yeah. fair. Oh, it's three there? All right. Well, it's five somewhere. So, <laughs> all right. Um, it's also guys, 8 a.m. somewhere. And I know you guys, this may feel a little choppy, but there's like two or three conversations going on. Um, I'm not quick to call people trolls for a little while, and you guys are probably right, but my dad. Yeah, well, to... I'm not that guy. That's your experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want a few days before gay? We pushed him to go. Yes, yes. Good job, Stephanie. She says, "Oh, my dad tried bargaining for his life. He wanted to wait a few days before getting admitted, which is always the excuse." Oh, I just need a few more days. Tomorrow never gets here. We pushed him to go that day. Yes. Good job. Good job. Uh, Emily, feel, feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, there you go. Um, and MH, that's my phone number. If you want to give me a call and you decide that you don't want to... What's the worst thing that's happened from to both of you from drinking? I lost me. I lost yeah. everything. I lost me. Um, my soul was up for sale. Um, you know, we could sit here and tell you and, and do our war stories, but we won't. I don't but do my drink a lot. Yeah, we won't. But what we will tell you is it'll destroy everything in your life if you drink like I do. Right. I call I call alcohol the equal opportunity destroyer. Yep. It doesn't give a fuck who you are, where you came from. Nope. You know, and AA is full of people who would not normally mix. Um, I would not drink with anybody from AA ever. Because yeah. you will drink my alcohol and that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so um George Thoroughgood. Yep. Yep, that was my theme song. I drink alone. It kept I, me out of many fights. It, <laughs> did. What, what, what does uh, Bill say? Um, pretty much that he he uh, didn't cheat on his wife because he was always too drunk. And thank God. <laughs> he said it much better than I did. But um, you know, When I have new people come on that haven't listened before, I always like to go a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I was not a social drinker. Not towards the end anyway. But I get it. I get it. I don't even know what social drinking was. Yeah. Well, when I say social drinking, that means I'm drinking with other people. That's all it means to me. That's all it meant to me. <laughs> That's all it There means. were other people, human beings around me. Yeah. That was the only thing social about it. Yeah. No. Oh, if four four of my friends and I got together with a six pack, I am not in that conversation. Nope. I'm thinking about who's getting the second beer. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking there's not enough alcohol. I'm thinking about can I afford it? Do I have enough in my wallet? <laughs> yep. To continue drinking here. Nope. I think I'll go to the liquor store and go home. Yep. I used to I used to keep uh um you know, I used to uh, take a pint into the bar with me and I just order Cokes. Right? Yeah, well, MH, you know, um, you can find us here. I put my phone number in there. You know, I'm willing to talk to you. I'd rather you be um, sober when we do, though. But write down my phone number. I don't care if you came in to troll or, or start shit. I don't care. I got God in my life, and he leads people to me that need my help. So, and we can help you have a much better life, bud. That's or, only if you want it, MH. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think you were. Because mm -mm, you would have said some pretty nasty things, and you were honest with me. My comment about the end isn't posting. I'm sorry. There's a lot of things going on. So, all right. Um, we're at almost an hour, and I'm going to wrap it up now. 
So, um, but if you sub subscribe, you'll be able to see it. I'm on Facebook, right? Um, here, I wanted to see this last part too. Um, I didn't care if my dad hated me. He has been very grateful every moment he regained. I pushed that he had to go or he was going to drop dead. Very scary. Very grateful he's here today. You know, for us to get sober, it takes depth and weight. Right? And a lot of times, depth and weight is mom, mommy, your kids. I got sober for my wife and kids. I did recovery for me. But it took me months to get started on the program um the first couple of months i had to learn how to walk i had to learn how to talk again i don't remember my first month and a half two months you know what my I, first I, my first goal was what was to be able to brush my teeth in front of the mirror at the sink yeah because my toothbrush had become a weapon i would uh, <laughs> yeah well, I didn't want and, to look at the and, I would, and I would brush my teeth in the shower because I was going to get sick. Yeah. To answer your I, question, I MH. I'm saying, I get it. Yeah. Because it would get. To answer me. your question, MH, send Dion a friend request because yeah. he'll he'll send you a link when he's going to go live. That's something yeah. I want to discuss with you, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know because I know yeah. I can probably do it better a different way. No, um, schedule it. I that's the thing I don't schedule this I just go live well I understand um, so, but I can start scheduling We're talking about getting the numbers up yeah consistency yeah okay sounds good MH and then you have my phone number too don't it's okay start by texting you start by texting you know we, we don't make demands here we're just no there are no demands i make we don't want any money this will either appeal to you or it will not yeah um i do this three times a day <laughs> um if you want to subscribe i've got over two thousand videos there's plenty in there but what you're appreciating right now is the camaraderie okay now as alcoholics we understand something and it's the loneliness we know how lonely you are. And that's why I invited you in. I don't care if you're a drinker. <laughs> I know how we lonely know, you are. We, we, we know what that hole is inside your chest. Yeah. Well, you know, and thank you for being honest. That is honest. And that's where you got to start, right? We, we help. We help sober curious. We help hard drinkers. And we help alcoholics. I'll tell you something. It, it's like, MH, it, I, I, I didn't get in trouble every time I drank. But every time I'd gotten in trouble, I had been drinking. It's my line. Or using or both. Yeah. Yep. And, and what I would do is I would start drinking at home. So that way I didn't get in trouble. And then my thought process was, well, I'm not hurting anyone. See, for, for me, it was like controlled drinking was not a concept to me. It's like, why would anybody want to do that? It, yeah, I've never tried to control my drinking. But I was really? let known I was an alcoholic at a pretty young age. So I, I, I liked oblivion. That was my goal. Hell yeah, that's what I went for. Because I would just want to be a crazy motherfucker. I wanted you to call me precocious. I wanted to be dangerous. I wanted you to fucking fear me. I wanted I, I wanted some of that liquid courage because some I I had some inhibitions and it broke down my inhibitions so I could yeah. actually be me. Yeah. Which uh, was a an absolute asshole. Uh, I worked in the truck, so the guys always ask me, and you're like well, I drink Kool-Aid, right? Right, so, right. But, but the hard part in the beginning, I mean, it, it's very lonely. But so I didn't think I was hurting anybody, which wasn't true. The best gift I gave my mommy, and yes, I say mommy, I'm 
53, but she's my mommy, okay? My auntie, my wife, my children, my little daughters, my grandchildren, they weren't born yet. The best gift I gave them was sobriety because now they don't stay up all night wondering if, wondering if they're going to get a phone call that I'm dead in a ditch or worse, your son's in jail for killing someone. Had all of those phone calls. Well, not for killing somebody, but but you had the with, other with the exception of, of that. Go. Yeah, you know when I had to, when I had to ask my parents to access the money I had been sending home um, for my bail money. Yep, that was the that was probably one of the worst phone calls. Yeah, yeah. See, Emily, and isn't it much nicer now? You know, you know, I was worried about my daughter, you know, and I'm not going to go into everything, but we hadn't seen each other for, for a couple of years. Um, um, yeah, we're, I won't get into cannabis here. Not, we're already, we're already, this. but, um, yeah, the next time I saw her, after about two years, she had gained all this weight. And I was relieved. <laughs> because I'm like, well, she ain't, she's not doing what she was doing. And, you know, she just found a healthier lifestyle. And, you know, and see, it freed you. It freed Emily up to become a better person also. Now, Emily's going to become a better person. Dad's going to become a better person. When you come together, you change the fucking world. That's so cool. I love it. I love it. If, if, if I quit acting the way that I acted, I was becoming a better person. Great point. Progress, not perfection. That's right. That's right. All right. I'm going to wrap it up because I really need to pee. So um, an hour is good. That was that was a good hour, bro. It was. We, we covered a lot of different things. I've had, I have more people here than I've had in months. But just the fact that MA joined, MA joined. Yep. MA That's the reason you do this. Yep. And it and it turns out that I think I know Emily. Actually, that name's very familiar to me. So it'd be cool if we, uh, you know. Um, so, all right. Thank you, everybody. All right, bro. Here. Um, I do. That's why Daryl is here. But. Um, I love you, but I ain't gonna let you on drunk. And you're gonna need a little bit of time first. Um, I'm not a therapist, man. I'm not a counselor. I'm just a dude trying to help other people out. Okay? I'm a closed mouth friend. That's it, man. That's all right. So I love you all, even if you don't love yourself and there's nothing you can do about it either. I love you. Peace out. Peace, bro. And have a day.